All right, welcome back to Fuckin' Talks, the podcast, episode 009. Today on the show, the Build Back Better program is getting dark. The world's first Asian Muppet made her television debut. Sorry, Ted Lou, thought that was you. The Democrats continue to support pedos. Kamala Harris actually said something that was pretty funny. We're going to give her credit where credit's due. Kyle Rittenhouse trials finally come to an end, and there's another demonic music event. This plus a whole lot more. It's Fluckus Talks, the podcast, episode 009, ranked the best new podcast of all time. Of all time. Because words are just words until action actually starts. And action speak louder than words. But at the same time, words speak louder than action because sometimes it's the right thing to do. Very cool. Very cool. It's what the Stocks Podcast featuring Richard and Rap Culture. That was fucking dope. Nailed it right away. What's the music thing? Um, just some guy got his face pissed on. Oh, yeah. I saw uh, that. I've been vindicated okay. again. Okay. <laughs> All right. Sesame Street made its first Asian Muppet. Now, you're probably asking, what about Ernie? Isn't he Indian? Isn't Indian the same thing as Asian? Well, the answer to that is I guess not. Yeah. This is the first Asian Muppet. This is what this is what she looks like. Hmm. Looks more like a Puerto Rican Muppet. Something's missing. If, if you ask me. Something's missing. Something's there's, a little off. So a the hair's right. The hair is right. The, the skin, straight black hair. The skin color looks pretty correct. Skin color is pretty on point. Now, Richard Rapway, when it comes to Asian Muppet making, uh huh. What do you think would make your Muppet an Asian Muppet? What would you do first? A straight black hair. Yeah, that's a bangs, good, easy maybe. place to start. <laughs> easy place to start. But there's then something that just seems to be missing. I'd eventually move towards the eyes. Mm, the eyes. So it looks like in this case, they went to make an Asian Muppet. Mm-hmm. But because things are so racially sensitive, they didn't want to offend anybody and like promote any sort of racial stereotypes. Yeah. So they made an Asian Muppet that doesn't look Asian. Because they didn't want to do the eyes. They went in with an anti-racist mindset and they accomplished it. So, I mean, kudos to you. You told us it was Asian, so now we know. Yeah, you had to tell us it was Asian in order for us to know. You're not allowed to do any direct Asian things. It happened with the, the And this judge. is this is actually a South... It's a Korean. Korean. They're specific. Oh, it's a Korean Muppet. So it's not just Muppet. a broad Asian Muppet. It's a Korean Muppet. It's a Korean <laughs> yeah. Muppet. Um, you wouldn't be able to tell by looking at it. Uh, and you're not allowed to. You're not allowed to know a race based on what it looks like because that would be promoting racial stereotypes. It even happened with the judge in the Rittenhouse case. He said, well, we ordered Asian food for lunch. And, you, and Washington Post wrote an article about <laughs> yeah. why that's not okay. Yep. Not okay. You can't say Asian. And Joe Biden called someone a Negro. And then the Washington Post also wrote an article about that saying how this is what he meant to say. And this is what he was trying to get out. Isn't that crazy how the, they just selectively use it when they need well, it? Those are my favorite when it's in like the same 24 hour window and it's two different takes. And it's like, OK, looks like they're going with one direction here and it's not ours. It's not mm, our way. Exactly. And there's so there seems to be like a racial like when it comes to the left they have like a totem pole of like people who are oppressed i guess of course and on the i guess the asian people aren't as high as like black people on the list npr had a tweet today michelle Wu, an asian american is the first woman and first person of color elected to lead the city while many are hailing it as a turning point others see it as more of a disappointment that the three black candidates couldn't even come close so when an Asian person is successful, it's like, oh, it's okay. It's good that she's an Asian person, but black people were trying to do it too. Just And they didn't get let in and given a free job or whatever. Just hate, hate, hate. Like no matter what the outcome is, it's like I always could have been darker or more less privileged or whatever. I think Asian people are kind of the white people of the – Minorities. International community, you yeah, know, yeah, non-white, like white, yeah, exactly. They're like they work hard, they're smart, they kind of you know dominate. Like Japan is very culturally dominant. sound, yeah. Keep, they keep it tight. Japan keeps it tight. tight I know family that. units. South Korea is pretty dope as well, but uh, yeah, I, I think we're gonna see more anti Asian discrimination coming, and it won't be from the fake white supremacists like we see. It'll be those brutal knockouts. Yeah, because they were saying for the Muppet, they made the Muppet. Yeah, what was the, the here, quote? I'll say it. Um, they said for the Muppet, it, basically, it sounds like there was just a South Korean, uh, American born South Korean puppeteer who kind of was like in the mix and kind of pushed this. And she got it like basically based off her. Um, 
but it said uh, G Young. I think it's the Muppet is called G Young. G Young's existence is the culmination of a lot of discussions after the events of 2020, George Floyd's death and anti-Asian hate incidents. Oh yeah, in 2020 when all the black people were sucker punching old Asian ladies yeah. and stuff. I've, if you watch this week in culture, you've seen pretty much countless uh, Asian San Francisco Asian lady sucker punched. Uh, Asian lady stolen from, and uh, it's not the white supremacist. Asian lady kicked down the subway stairs. Yeah. Horrible stuff. There's the the random, like, walking by a street in New York, and it's just like a sucker punch, and he keeps walking. He doesn't oh, even yeah. care. Horrible. Um, and then in colleges, they're teaching the kids, and they're kind of going through. There's, like, this uh, graph that tracks um, GPAs, SAT scores, mm-hmm. enrollment percentages and stuff. Mm-hmm. And when it, to prove their point, they just lumped – white and Asian people together. <laughs> so it's like, oh, look how much we're, look how much there's discrimination against like Latinos and black people. And then it's like compared to the whites and Asians. So it's like, oh, so is it not a race thing? Mm-hmm. Is it a race thing when you want it to be? It's just the two we pick. It's the two yeah. races we pick that we want to make a point out of. It's under the cover of race is kind of how they achieve everything they want to achieve. And they only use it selectively. It's truly a yeah. weapon. And the college admissions, it's like Asian people, please stand tall. Like it's harder for you to get in than white people even. Mm-hmm. And we already know white people are, it's good and it's good to lie. It's good to say I'm mixed. I'm I'm something. I'm Indian. I gotta, you know, uh, we can all follow Elizabeth Warren's lead a little bit on getting into college easily. Um, so you know, stand tall because you guys are getting screwed harder than white people. Right yeah, now. you can't even have a muppet that looks like you. Yeah, they won't even do it. They, they won't, won't even do it. They won't even they, do they're it. They're right. too scared to even try. And they just gave us this. Lupe Muppet. <laughs> Lupe, Lupe, the Puerto Rican. Puerto Muppet. Rican. Covered. Speaking of Muppets, Beto O'Rourke. Mm, yeah. yeah. He's running for governor again, and he's openly coming for our AR-15 still. Probably. It's funny because, uh, you know, that was his whole gimmick. Like, when you're in 2016 – did he run for president in 2016? Was it 2020? And then – yeah, I thought he ran early in 2020. And then remember Joe Biden said, when I if I win, I'll, I'll put Beto in charge of the guns? Okay. Okay. Never did. But so it's funny because when you do that sort of thing, you have to differentiate yourself from a crowd of like 20 Democrats. And so Beto was like, I'm going balls to the wall on gun grabber. I'm going to be the gun grabber one. Amy Klobuchar is going to be the boring one. Joe's the senile one. Tulsi's the 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 moderate. Yeah. Kamala's the plant. And, (laughs) um, but he was like, I'm going to be the gun grabber one. And then Texas does the abortion law. And like, that's going to be the left's big rallying cry around it uh, for this upcoming governor election, at least. And Beto picked the wrong topic, basically. Yeah. But I'm sure he'll find it in his heart yeah. to do some abortion stories about how his niece and something happened. Mm-hmm. But um, he's yeah. white Obama. He's a dork. Um, he's a total, totally crafted billionaire family plant like fake muppet plan yeah he's He's, such a loser he's coming for the guns he's gonna make it so you can't defend yourself but he might pivot and change it so you can murder the unborn yeah i think those are his two (laughs) strong lanes that he's gonna choose well because i mean think about it if he had made it like a women's right to choose and that was his whole thing he'd be like i'm perfect for this but you're just a weird guy who wants to grab the guns and Mm. the police aren't even out anymore and gun sales went since then have gone like you know, through the roof. So Beto, I think you might be losing. Mm-hmm. Um, Bad and place to do that, Beto. Try that and do it in Massachusetts. Yeah. Go, go to Vermont. Go somewhere stupid. Texas. Yeah. Well, you know what their plan is in Texas, what they're trying to do with Texas. Well, hopefully we see the Latino vote come out strong like we saw in uh, Virginia and in uh, elsewhere. I think New Jersey, you know, we outperformed on – the GOP outperformed on Latinos. And so I think there's a lot of like Hispanic and Latinos who are like in those border towns and they're like, hey, bro, we kind of hate this shit. Like (laughs) it's not that sweet down here and we don't need 90 of us for every square mile. So It's um, so true. And then the right spends so much time trying to win the black vote. Which is – And we make progress and we like show all these things that the Democrats are doing to the black community and whatever. But it's like – it goes from what ninety four percent to ninety one percent. Yeah, it goes from ninety ten to eighty five. Latinos though are out here just voting block central, and no just one really like, gives them any attention. And yeah. don't get me wrong, if you're here illegally, get them out. Yeah, peace. Immigration in general, shut it down. Need a few years to kind of relax. We're full. We're very full. Anyone who's here over recent years illegally, get them out. But. That voting block is unspoken to, bro. Yeah, and they're like pretty rational 
Yeah. Pretty Catholic, pretty yeah. Christian, pretty rational. Catholic family units. That should be easy. We just lead with like God and abortion and be like, Beto doesn't like God and wants to kill the babies. And they'll be like, I guess I got to vote for a Chad Prather. <laughs> <laughs> Where is he running? Uh, governor of Texas, I believe. He is? Yeah. Because Greg Abbott isn't, Greg Abbott's, people think he's good. He's all right. Yeah. He's, he's not that great. He's kinda... a lot more he could have done for the border. All right, moving on. Obviously, this show is brought to you by ShopBuckets.com. Guys, the holidays are coming. We have a new shirt. Become Unpinnable. We've been talking about it a lot in the show. It's kind of like this mantra and way we live. Now you can live that way too with a t-shirt that's less than $20. Go to the website, use code Jerry. All the shirts become less than 20 bucks. We have classic colors. Look at these classic colors. The green, the blue, the gray, the hoodie, the crew neck sweater. Mm -hmm. It's all perfect. It's all there. Shopbuckets.com. Get yours today. Support the show and show the people around you that you're changing your ways and becoming more and more unpinnable. So moving on, um, this note looks like one of those half-baked catatonic notes. Mm. Pork belly sucks. Richard Ratboy and I had like a brunch the other day yeah. in um, the gay part of town. So it was just like... <laughs> it was brutal. It was an event. Uh, and we got like a pork belly thing. And it's like, dude, pork belly, for an animal that can be served up as bacon, yeah, you really try to make it taste like and feel like turkey. It was just so fatty it's and like disgusting. not fried. It's like when I think of pork belly on a BLT, it's like you're going to fry it up. You're going to crisp it. You're going to make it similar. So it's like a thick BLT. We got bamboozled. It was just soft, fatty meat. It was like soft, fatty, like bland meat. And you put a poll up on your Instagram, right? Uh, yeah. Pork belly, good or bad? Yes or no, basically. Everyone said it's good. And so, I mean, we're fighting an uphill battle, but our experience with that pork belly was terrible. We will not be coming back. And I think I'm done with pork belly. Yeah, I've always every single time I get pork belly, I always say the same thing like, "Oh, that was just okay. Wish I didn't get that. I should have got something else. I knew what this was going to be." And every time it disappoints. I think I probably had pork belly good one time. Asian pork belly is good, like a a bao, like a a bao pork belly oh, yeah. bun. That's good. Well, I think that's just I think it's just pork belly. You have to say Asian. <laughs> <laughs> You're not allowed to say Asian. You can't. You can't use descriptors, even yeah. if it's racially accurate. Yep. Um, so yeah, pork belly sucks. Cubans are dry, and that place. Cubans. Let's. Yeah, let's that go place back to had, the, had the I don't hairs like Cubans. On it. it had the hairs on it. The sandwich had the hairs on it. Remember when? Remember we got the Cuban sandwich and oh, there was hair in yeah. it. We got a Cuban sandwich and it was it had hair on it, and it was disgusting. There were hairs in it, like a dark hair from yeah. like. From a, from a bad spot. From some dude just working in the grill without a hairnet. Yeah. And yeah. So. So Cubans are dry. Cubans are dry. Uh, Pork belly is disgusting. And then, so I guess we're talking about food. Do you want to discuss your upcoming meme diet now? It's been a week. We're off of. Uh, oh, yeah. So I finished that, uh, that fast cleanse thing I had going. The liver pills and black coffee, Diet Cokes and zebra cakes. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm on a muscle milk thing where it's just now that I got the sickness out, I have like a new base, a new foundation. I'm feeling better. And I'm just going to replace two out of three meals with with muscle milk. And I ordered like a crate of muscle milks. And that's going to work. That's going to work for me. Odds on that surviving till next week's podcast episode. Well, I think that's all. I'm, I mean, I'm going to do like a week. It's going to be like a cleanse kind of too. Yeah. You so I'm to. only going to try to make it a week. Uh, but yeah, next week on the podcast, I will check in and we'll tell everyone how we did. It's just more muscle milks. Okay. Is the key. More muscle milks, less Uber Eats. Just want to keep the people involved and yeah, you know, that's what's going on. We're working out. We're getting, we're getting thick. So more muscle milks, pork belly, stay out of bacon's lane or else. Yeah, dismissed. Well, and then pork belly, the same thing. It's like I thought I was getting a BLT like thing, and now I that box hasn't been ticked in my brain. So now I'm on the hunt for a nice BLT. Mm. And you're on the muscle milk diet, so I'm on my own finding that BLT. Oh, uh, I'll, what? If you find the BLT? No, what, know. dude? Stick well, to your I'll diet. switch. I'll switch out a different forward meal. Oh. I'll, I'll build like a credit system. Okay, yeah, yeah. So and then, negative one, and then the debits will come in later for sure. Yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Build back better. Yep. Getting dark. If you use lowercase b's and you replace the b with a six, it makes more sense. <laughs> <laughs> it makes then more sense. Then you replace it. Yeah. <laughs> if you replace um, them with k's, it's pretty bad too. Yeah. Killed cat ketter. 
Not good. KKK, Joe Biden, Sorry, dog Joe. whistle. Talk about dog whistle. He's been whistling. Um, so the it's a classic situation where the name isn't what it is, but it sounds good enough because the whole world is meant to be gone through an autopilot. So they want the population kind of just like going downstream with everyone else. Oh, yep. build back better. Yeah, that makes oh, sense. It's alliteration. Oh. Yeah, don't we, we should improve and whatever. And it's the same thing where the name is actually the opposite of what it does. We see this with Planned Parenthood, not many parenthoods being planned. Antifa, they're not anti-fascist. They're actually fascist. <laughs> they actually love fascist tactics. <laughs> Fact checkers don't check the facts. Stuff like that. For sure. So it's just one of those things where it's like they disguise a horrible idea with a good sounding thing and assume everyone's going to be asleep. Listen to LeBron James and climate change people and Greta Thunberg, and they're just going to go along with it. You want to build back better and get green energy? It's like, yeah, yeah, that sounds good. Meanwhile, Joe Biden shutting down pipelines and gas is going up. And yeah. you see it and you go, well, the gas is going up and climate change is a problem. Like we should just go green anyway to avoid this. So there's a lot of that going on. Inflation, yeah, let's obviously a huge problem. I was going to say, let's build back the Middle East's uh, control over the U.S. Yeah, build exactly. That better. Um, we have an inflation. And then look, at, this is what Joe Biden's team is saying. So during all this stuff, holidays are coming. Everything costs more. Turkey, food on the table. Turkey traveling, jumped. Turkey jumped. Turkey jumped. Traveling, everything, gas. And then this is what Team Biden is prioritizing to pass. But even if it does pass, it's going to take a while for the benefits to kick in. Uh, so what can Americans expect in the short term? Is inflation going to get worse before it gets better? Is there anything President Biden can, get, can do in the short term? We're focused on how to address this in the short term and the medium term, George. In the short term, number one, we have to finish the job on COVID. We know that the more that people feel comfortable getting out into the economy, going to movies rather than buying a television at home, working in the workplace, the more we can return a sense of normalcy to our economy. Getting those shots out for five to 11 year olds is gonna provide a lot of comfort to American families. We're making a lot of progress on that front. Good to know we have responsible adults at the wheel. So their advice is to get vaccinated. Cool. And then I saw this meme I thought was pretty funny. Uh, it's like the clown meme. If you're on audio only, it's the progressively getting worse clown meme where the clown's dressing himself. <laughs> uh, and it says the first is an article headline re opinion. Republicans are scaremongering about inflation to derail the Democratic agenda. Next one is the inflation scare doesn't match reality. And then inflation looks bad now, but it's pretty much sticking to the script. And then finally, why the inflation we're seeing now is a good thing. So that's what we're, that's what they're doing. That's how they're controlling the narrative on their end. It's all about the vaccine, and that's the big problem. It's going to be it vaccine, vaccine, vaccine. Oh, inflation, who cares? There's people that are not vaccinated coming to your dinner table. Yeah. Doesn't that just show you how much of hitmen these journalists are? It's like, we need an article up now about this. And it's like, it'll change in a week. It'll change tomorrow. It'll change if it was a Republican instead of a Democrat. But just print it, please. You know, mm -hmm. like they're just absolute mercenaries with this. Yeah. It's not like they're getting it wrong and they're trying their best. Mm -hmm. They're just bad read. Yeah. Bad oh, read. Sorry. Different science. Yeah. They're like, oh, you know, bad opinion. Now oh, the study was flawed. Yeah, exactly. It's As nothing if, like that. There's no change in course. There's no attempt at truth. It's just pure narrative promotion. And it used to be e easier to hide because of less social media or whatever. And it's like you had to kind of read between the lines. Now it's just blatant. CNN, you, we'll talk about it with the Rittenhouse stuff later too. It's yeah. just absolutely in our face, not even trying to hide it. Uh, get vaccinated is still obviously the number one call to action. Of Sarah Gonzalez tweeted about a guy in Texas got a DWI and then the judge said he'd knock down the charge if he agreed to get vaccinated. Hey, so hold the vaccinated in your back pocket, <laughs> yeah. unvaccinated status. Get a jail free card. Judge will let you If off. you don't care about the vaccine, you'll get it anyway. Don't do it. And then get in trouble. Yeah, rob a bank. Maybe you get away and you're not vaxxed and you're living a good life. Or you head yourself. Get that, caught. That's like definitely, we've, that's been in culture a few times too. Like the other judges in different areas have definitely used that tool and it's sketchy as hell, right? Yeah. Like what the judge can just choose what extracurricular activities he likes the most and like jump on it. Mm -hmm. Like, Hey, go to the Pistons game and I'll let you off. Like we need the fans. Like what? It makes no sense. And every, that's just, it just reveals who's in on it. The media is in on it. They're, they're a tentacle. Yeah. The, the new big pharma tentacle is the new deep state money suck 
vacuum. Yeah. It used to be the Middle East. They scared us with 9-11. We need to do something. Everyone forfeits their rights. They overreach, take our rights. They go over there, take trillions of dollars from the American people, tax dollars, uh, don't really accomplish anything. Yep. Come back. Okay, that's not so popular anymore. We can't just keep doing it. What do we do? Oh, let's activate the Booster shot is a subscription booster service. Shot. Exactly. Yeah. Subscription service, booster shots, big pharma tentacle activated, trillions of dollars, rights forfeited, everyone's scared and subservient, and just giving it up. They just want to be told what to do, how to do it, when and where they can do it, who they can do it with. So I'm going to fight to change the world for the better until we're back to the days where the only wear a mask at the nail salon. Smart. So yeah, Build Back Better is satanic. They have it in the name, the 666, the lowercase b's. It's not an accident why they do that. Yep. Um, yeah, and everyone knows it. So I was thinking this the other day, Richard Rapoy. Yeah. Imagine, because obviously Joe Biden's been gaffing and going all over, doing speeches, signing well, he, bills. He has to. When he signs a bill, he'll like yeah, he's he has got to some do public speech. stuff he's got to do. <laughs> Imagine if your job is you're the person who preps Joe Biden these days. Tough. He's a, he's a delusional old man, senile, mm -hmm. losing it, doesn't fully know what's going on. And then all the things he needs to remember are like these circus facts that like don't nonsense. even make sense. It can't just be like, hey, Joe, like, trust your gut. Go out there and wing it. Yeah. Common sense will do 90% of the work. No new taxes, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, blah, blah, exactly. Blah, like the simple hit list. <laughs> We're going to make it easier for your family this holiday. It's like all the easy stuff is out the window. He has to remember like, super hard shit. Yep. This, that's backwards. He's got to remember like, oh, hey, Joe, remember that health secretary we appointed? Who's a guy, but it's a girl. And we have to say it's a girl. She's an admiral now. Yeah, exactly. Oh, uh, Kamal Harris's husband's going to be here. That's Doug Emhoff. He's the second man. But the, the other man, that's actually their daughter. And you can't confuse that either. Uh, China's also about to invade Taiwan. Uh, and the, all the bridges and roads are racist. Yeah. And the, Good road, luck. <laughs> and the roads are racist. The roads are racist now. Get out there. Wing it. Good luck. <laughs> Do us proud. Yeah. And, uh, and you're in Boston. You know, like, <laughs> yeah, good exactly. luck at the end. Don't forget what oh, city man. you're in. And then the news will just cover for him, though. Like, they don't care. We mentioned this before a little bit. Then the Negro comment he made. Yeah. Can you imagine? Obviously, it's so easy to say. Can you imagine if it was Trump? Yeah. They they did, like, worse. They they actually yeah. took words he didn't say and said he said it. Joe Biden says something, and they go, oh, this is what he meant to say. Why it's not a big deal. And why you shouldn't care. Yeah. Like the byline. Exactly. Thanks. Well, fun living here, guys. We appreciate it, media. Yeah. Fair We're, world. Way to stand up. I saw this quote on uh, Quite Frankly, um, good Quite friend frankly. of the show, Frank, from Quite Frankly. He posted a, I think it was a Reddit post, and it really summed it up. It says, it's not that the left can't meme per se, it's that their viewpoints rely on carefully constructed denial of reality to a far greater extent than any of the cults or religions they try to supplant. This doesn't lend itself to simple, easily conveyed messages, because if you rely on your viewers to see things as they are without providing several layers of carefully selected context, they'll interpret it the wrong way. The left can't meme because memes are the antithesis of how they communicate. 100%. Nothing is true. Nothing's simple. Nothing can just make sense and do common sense things. It has to be two plus two is five. Even though you think it's four, two plus two is five. Look at everyone else saying two plus two is five. What's two plus two? And it's just like uh, f five. It's yeah. five. It's and we, five. And it's an Asian Muppet. It's an Asian Muppet. We swear. With round eyes. And it's an Asian Muppet, right? And you have to say yes. yes. With that being said... I am open to criticizing the Biden Kamala Harris group. Yep, we love to do it. We love to do it. We'll but show up for it. When they get something right, I will admit that as well. You have to. Otherwise, you're just some rat hack. So, know. exactly. I'm not some rat hack looking for whatever, yeah. looking just for, you know, push my narrative points. So, Kamala Harris did something that was actually funny. It's not much, but <laughs> let's take a look. It's not an L. Look at this. Please welcome Heather Kurtenbach. In a moment. <laughs> Please have a seat. I mean, President. those are the moments where you're going to find someone like when it's off the cuff or like a random reporter asks a question, not the scripted speech. Like, there you go. She exactly. did a good job. Blind squirrel makes Willie Brown nut every once in a while. 
Okay. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> I'm not gonna. Oh, hey, we're not gonna pretend Kamala Harris is batting zero. Yep. For every ten cringe things she does, she does one somewhat natural thing where you can't tell she's an alien in human skin. Yeah. And that was it. That was pretty good. She that did good her job. Bit. They were playing it on Fox like she like should be embarrassed. It's like that was pretty funny. Yeah, exactly. Don't don't dunk when there's nothing to dunk on. Yeah. Like it, it makes everybody just bitter exactly. and weird. We can't be bitter. Obviously the saying is politics is downstream from culture. The way we win long term is to be cooler than these people, be cooler than them, be funnier than them. Um, it's going to be not hard either because it's going to be like these mad, scared people wearing two masks and Taco Bell asking to see your papers. And their cultural change in another 18 months. It'll be to- completely different. Exactly. And, and we'll, we'll still be right here, be chilling. Cool, fun, having a good time, laughing. Everyone else is going to be scared, not able to laugh, not allowed to laugh because the people you're laughing at are marginalized or whatever. And it's just a really not fun culture you don't want to be a part of. We're having fun on our side. Let's just set the example and do it that way. Don't force it. Not everything is going to be a dunk on Joe Biden and Kamala. It's very easy to. There's plenty to dunk with. Yeah. Joe Biden has had funny off the cuff things, too. Like he'll get one right on accident almost. Exactly. But you can't you can't just trash everything. It has to be trashable. Exactly. It, it, it Water will seek its own level. Everyone will eventually figure out who's who, who's funny, who's not, who wants to be led by who. You don't want to be led by the Muppets. So people are going to wake up. PBS actually did an interview with like this Asian guy and they're trying to get him to say that like Trump is super authoritarian. Yeah. And he basically turned it on him and was like, well, not really. He didn't have the support of the government. Listen to what he says. In your book, you're describing the directives of Mao Zedong during the Cultural Revolution that would be distributed publicly every night. And then you write, this is your quote, they served a function similar to Donald Trump's late night tweets while in office. They were the direct communication of a leader's thoughts to his devoted followers, enhancing the sanctity of his authority. So do you see Donald Trump as an authoritarian? I, well, I don't, you know, he, if you are authoritarian, you have to have a system in supporting you. You cannot just be authoritarian by yourself. But uh, certainly in United States, with today's uh, condition, you can easily have an authoritarian. In many ways, you're already in the authoritarian state. You just don't know it. How so? Many things happens today in US. It can be compared to cultural revol- revolution in China. Like what? Like people trying to be unified in certain political correctness, that is very dangerous. This lady wants Trump to be authoritarian so bad. Yeah. And it's like, actually, no, he's not authoritarian. And if he wa- if there was authoritarianism, it's actually here now yeah. under, the gu- under the guise of political correctness which is exactly what they're doing. They're using it as a weapon to take their political opponents out because those who stand up against political correctness are standing for basic truths, tradition, culture, stuff like that. And you can't have that in the world they want to usher. And they they tried to have a Aaron Rodgers struggle session live last week on the podcast, but he refused to let them. So what's that struggle session where it's like you admit your wrongs and like they used to do it in under Mao, I think where it's like you admit your wrongs and then you pledge your allegiance to the state and like they humiliate you publicly. Basically like cancel culture or like- That's like what they do now though. Yeah, and the media is just doing it. Like Kevin of like, Hart or whatever, they you know, made a joke and then they cancel him and he oh, apologizes, yeah. I stuff forgot, like that. Uh, Kevin Hart bounced back from that. He just- Yeah. He, he was clean. He didn't have to go down. Aaron Rodgers beats the Seahawks this week and it's it's gone. Yeah, it's over. So, they moved on. Winning cures all. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, speaking of winning, once again on the show, we've been vindicated. Smart. I feel like on the show, we're constantly talking about things and topics, and we're always being proven right. Like to keep a little scoreboard. And we like to keep a little scoreboard. So we've been vindicated once again. I uh, remember a few weeks ago, I said demonic people, kind of off the cuff, they do all these bad things. They drink piss. Yes. And you were like, oh, that's just like you saying it. It's not demonic necessarily. Yeah, like well, they're going to kill us all in the metaverse. They're going to kill us all in the metaverse. They drink piss. It is actually what they're up to. 
because there was a music performance and the female uh, lead singer, I believe, on stage so. squatted over a guy and peed on his face in the middle of the whole show. Was that guy a fan? Who was this? I don't know. Okay. He's got his face peed on. And it's just like, so, I don't know. We kind of talk about this a lot, how it's like, it's a cheap reaction. It's like, yeah. if I wanted to make you react right now, Richard Rapway. Yeah. It's like I could make a funny joke that yeah. would be clever and then you'd laugh or I, you know, rip my shirt Bodily or fluids. Like spit or like slap a fart joke yeah. or, you know, and then mm-hmm. for them, they pick piss and it yeah. just gets an emotional reaction and it kind of just like ugh, you force people to react and that's demonic. Yeah. I, I I have nothing to add. It's it's greasy. It's very. I don't greasy. know if it's demonic or greasy or just trashy or what, but obviously it's. And in the same theme, uh, Island Boys. You know mm-hmm. the Island Boys. I do know the Island, Island Boys. Boys. One of them put a message out. Here's the clip where he basically says he sold his soul and he hasn't felt good since. He said he made a deal with the devil with the island boy fame with the like mm-hmm. the trade off he, he made and he said it was a week ago so i so so about a week not today but about a week ago i sold my soul you understand what i'm saying and uh ever since i sold my soul i haven't been happy ever since you know what i'm saying um hey yo man Y'all ain't gotta believe me. It is what it is. I, I, like, I'm not even capping. It's because, listen, I had to do it. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, I had to do it because I was trying to make it. Like, you feel me? Like, <clears throat> and as of when I was, th- like, selling my soul, um, like, there was things that I could sacrifice about and stuff like that. And I sacrificed myself. I could have sacrificed anybody, but like, but when you sell your soul, you gotta sacrifice someone that you really love, and I sacrificed myself and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Um, and I did it. You know what I'm saying? Um, I couldn't do it with nobody that I love. The demon asked me, uh, you, are you sure you want to sacrifice yourself? You can sacrifice someone that you love? I said, no. Nah. But when you sell your soul, you feel me? You got to, you got to, uh, it's not what how people say it is. You, you really got to, like, you really got to pick. You understand what I'm saying? And, 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 and you get anything you want. You get to be rich. You get to, you get to be, you get to have fortune. You get to. You have to have everything, everything you ever wanted. You feel me? But you could think I'm cap. I'm not tripping. I did it a week ago. I haven't been happy ever since. I've been having anxiety every single day. What did I wish for? To be famous and be rich. What? Um, and this was like a few days ago. So it's been like, uh, you know, over a week. And he said he sold his soul for money and fame. He chose to sacrifice himself. And he hasn't felt right since. He's been having mad anxiety. Wow. And he hasn't felt right since. Hey, but Island Boy, get well soon, man. Get well soon. It's we not like you. too late. You're very redeemable. Yeah. Accept Jesus Christ. Reject the devil. The deal you made is nothing compared to the deal you can make with Jesus if you repent and accept him as your Lord and Savior. I actually saw the Island Boys giving good advice. Um, I like the Island Boys. Yeah. The, well, Cernovich, I think, t- retweeted a video of them, and it's like, bro, how can I get my confidence back? It's like, how do I do better with girls? And they basically told him to like, lift weights, focus on yourself, don't jerk off. <laughs> it's like, go. that's a pretty good hit list. Based Island Boys, and yeah. that's pretty much it. Yeah. So open invite, Island Boys, to come we, on we the like show. We like the Island Boys. I DM'd one of them. They didn't reply. I'm sure they're getting a lot of DMs, a lot of yeah. cameos too. Yeah, cameos. Alex Jones got a cameo. Infowars.com. <laughs> hey, shout out to Infowars.com. <laughs> Infowar. Yeah. All right, moving on. The Kyle Rittenhouse trial. It honestly shouldn't even gone to trial, in my opinion. This is like if this was the '90s and things were normal, more normal. This would be a self-defense, obvious 
case in and out. No, no need to even go through all this. Yeah. And but, the FBI kind of withheld that evidence too, a little bit of the, the drone footage, correct? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Of the initial procession where Kyle was being chased. Yeah. By the mob of rioters and uh, handgun wielding, skateboard wielding and thugs. Yeah. Criminals? Yeah. Criminals, pedophiles, women abusers, all kinds of horrible people. Yeah. The, the, the repeat domestic abuser. And I just wonder, it's like when you listen to these, like the closing statements a couple of days ago. And you watch like these lawyers just lie about this teenager. And it's like, if your lies convince the jury and then this kid goes to jail because you're going to lie and say he's a liar and he was there to start trouble and he should have put his gun down and used his fist to fight his way out. He should have just surrendered to the mob and dropped his gun. It's Everyone like, takes a beating every once in a while. Yeah. As if it's completely normal, like what happened and what he did was so outrageous. It's like, well, you have no police. Yeah. And people are burning down the town. And then someone goes to try and stop it and prevent it. And then they put them through this. What does that tell everyone else? It's like, hey, don't defend yourself. Don't become the police. Let 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 these rioters, Antifa, BLM destroy your business, destroy your house, destroy your life. You can't do anything about it. Or put on a BLM T-shirt and go full GTA mode and you'll mm. be Gucci. Yeah, for real. Exactly. You can do whatever you want as long as you have a BLM shirt on. But, um, yeah, it's just, I mean, the prosecutorial, like, misconduct or whatever you want to call it, like the accusations and stuff, and it's like, you lose the right to self-defense when you bring a gun. And it's like, what? What are you talking about, dude? <laughs> I don't think that's, that's my self defense true. tool. That's what it's here for. I'm yeah. not like wielding it around like you in the courtroom. But I mean, there's bad prosecutors. There's people who have gotten locked up for crimes that they didn't even do, you know, and exonerated much later. So I mean, it's nothing new with. But it's like these these people. It's like, don't you look at the case and say, all right, the self-defense, and then almost like, all right, we're required to prosecute him, right? Yeah, I'm getting pressured to prosecute him. So it's like, him. all right, did you know? Did you fear for your life? Yes. Or did you have all any other options? No. It's like, wouldn't you give him layup questions so he can just prove it was self-defense? Like, instead, these guys are trying to, like, do whatever they can. Yeah, it's just a put win. Kyle Rittenhouse, a 17-year-old kid at the time, away. Yeah. No, 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 no. Like that. Mm. That's how it becomes. It's like a win loss thing. And mm -hmm. it's like I win by any means necessary, regardless of how I feel about it. And obviously the prosecutor's kind of a, a little bitch boy. Yeah. He's drinking soy, mm -hmm. drinking soylent and, uh, you know, doesn't, doesn't know anything about guns. Right. Mm -hmm. Hollow point, exploding bullet. The, the guy's just kind of a Muppet. Mm -hmm. I Should like the judge. Yeah. Judge the, is a good American guy. The judge is good. Well, there's a there's another thing. The judge with the uh, proud to be an American ringtone. And it's like you're slowly watching what triggers like absolute left leaning liberal crazies. You're watching what triggers them become less and less and less. And it's like the American flag started triggering them about 18 months ago, you know, or mm -hmm. wh whatever it is, maybe during Trump time, maybe like a little bit before that. But now I'm proud to be an American is, is unacceptable and, and has bias. So you can't be proud to be an American. Yeah. Period. That's a giveaway. The flag. Look at that flag behind the judge the whole time. The flag, our supremacy. country's flag. Yeah. And then like the normies are watching like, yeah, white, white supremacist judge, bad kid. Yeah pedo guy who was attacking the kid was good and it's like uh i, I can't go all the way yeah i can't yeah i can't be pro joe rosenbaum pedo serial pedo and not defend color and like it'll wake a lot of people up yeah because the stooges in the media and ben and jerry's and all these idiots that come out like ben and ben jerry's is jerry's. out talking about this joy reed and dl hewley who are my two least favorite people they made it all about race course they had to here's what dl hewley says in his instagram i gotta find out what is in these white tears they do so well we have to find the ingredients for white tears they work so well oh, like God. white tears you gotta call them to you gotta call them white tears really they, man let me tell you every time a white person cries somebody's found not guilty it, that, that 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 was the worst that was the now, worst acting i've seen since stacy dash are you crazy that was horrible when you saw that video, was that your opinion? Like immediately you thought, well, they're going to let, they're, they're going to let him off. Of course, of course, because let's be clear. The right doesn't believe that they believe COVID was a hoax, that Sandy Hook never happened, that the January 6th, 6th insurrection was tourist. 
they, they believe that, uh, you know, all these things are false, but they believe that performance was real. It, it really says a lot about the low standards you have to reach. We live in a nation right now where a man who knelt is vilified and a man who killed is glorified. It is insane. Yeah. Meanwhile, it's like a, like a month ago, wasn't there like a black student, same age as Rittenhouse? A school shooter. Who mm-hmm. shot people in school, yeah. multiple people, brought a gun to school, shot multiple people, and then got let out that same day for way less bond. Yeah, 25K bond. And 25K. Like taking pics, like... Taking pics at a party. And yeah. Rittenhouse has like a $2 million bond. Yeah. And he has to go through all this. So like, what about... 200... Uh, yeah, GoFundMe deleted. Yeah. How about that? GoFundMe deleted. Yeah. Kyle Rittenhouse can't have a GoFundMe, but Amazon and Kamala Harris can donate to the bail bond fund for the rioters. Yep. So it's like, and that people kind of always wonder, like, why is the media, why are the corporations in on this like woke agenda? And I think it's because eventually when the next phase happens, though they will be the power brokers. The corporations will be the most powerful, yeah. the richest, and have more power than governments in some cases. We see it with Facebook and Apple and stuff like that, Google. So it's like they're setting the stage. They're maybe taking a loss here and there. But in the next phase, the corporations become the power brokers. Yeah. So it's definitely already happening, too. Yeah. There's a doing a, a little bit of a ruling class thing. And and that it's funny that you say, like, the media, obviously, and what they're talking about. And it's it's great and funny to watch them not be able to talk about the vic- the victims, the people who died and gauge uh, gross crutes or whatever, mm-hmm. because they just can't talk about them. So you're like, oh, wait, isn't something missing? But like your brain doesn't work like that. So it's like you have to really be thinking about the case to notice that like, hey, they're not pumping these victims. They're not talking about Joseph Rosenbaum and how he, you know, how he's got a warm meal at home and his family was waiting for him. It's like, no, he was diddling kids and released from a mental institution. Yeah. And like, so it's like screaming it, the N word at the BLM rally. Yeah, that's my favorite when they have to say yeah. the N word. Was he there for Black Lives Matter? I don't think so. And then one of the prosecutor was even like listing all the things Joseph Rosenbaum did and trying to like cover it like it was normal. He just happens to stumble into it. So what does he do that night? Oh, let me tell you all the awful things Joseph Rosenbaum did. He tipped over a porta potty that had no one in it. He swung a chain. He lit a metal garbage system dumpster on fire. Oh, and there's this empty wooden flatbed trailer that they pulled out in the middle of the road and they tipped it over to stop some bear cats and they lit it on fire. Oh, and he said some bad words. He said the N-word. Well, the, mm-hmm. Yeah, so he got a little aggressive. He swung a chain. He flipped a porter potty. He started a fire on a trailer in the street. He was a good kid. Yeah. He yelled the N-word. Yeah. Is it that, you know? But it's yeah. like if Kyle Rittenhouse was yelling the N-word and killed people in self-defense, they'd be a little bit different. Yeah. But, but so back to the, like, the media focuses wherever they think they can get the most juice out of it. And it's like victims, victims quote. No, can't get it. Can't get juice out of those. Those are bad. Uh, Kyle Rittenhouse. Yeah. Let's just call him a white supremacist and say, what if a black kid did this? It's Mm -hmm. just like, it it shows how trash they are and uh, how nothing really matters except for trying to get people to think one way about it. Yeah. And it, and it's powerful because you have people out there who are literally making signs and banners that are like Joseph Rosenbaum was a hero. Yeah. And like, you guys are siding with like serial pedos, the Democrats promote it and like it. And this kind of takes us to the next topic. Remember how I'm always saying LGBTQIA and eventually P vindicated again, vindicated again. The eventually P part of that is heating up is upon us. (laughs) The eventual P part is not eventual anymore. And the pedos are here and they're labeling themselves something different because pedophile they say is too aggressive of a term. Of course. So now the, now they're going by maps. The pedophiles have rebranded. They've rebranded and they go by maps now. Minor attracted person. Uh, this is a clip from an old Dominion professor, I believe. And let's see what it, let's see what he says. Thank you so much for that question. Um, I use the term minor attracted person or map uh, in the title and throughout the book for multiple reasons. Um, first of all, because I think it's important to use terminology for groups that members of that group want others to use for them. Um, And MAP advocacy groups like Before You Act um, have advocated for use of the term MAP. 
Um, they've advocated for it primarily because it's less stigmatizing than other terms like pedophile. He definitely won't act on those things. And yeah, we can trust him. And that's what's going to happen. They're going to bring the pedos in, the maps. They're going to try and normalize it. And a lot of people are going to continue to step away. And this is because something I've also said many times. The problem with progressivism is it doesn't have a destination. Things will eventually keep going more and more, quote, progressive yeah. until someone eventually calls you a bigot for not letting them f*** your kid. And that's the problem. And if you don't stop it, eventually it'll get there and hopefully you stop it then. Yeah. So, yeah, I think the constant theme we're seeing when it comes to the vaccine, the pedos, Rittenhouse, everything lately is that these people are willing to sacrifice and injure or destroy our nation's youth in order to appease some sick or scared people and make them feel safe. All the kids got to get vaxxed so like these Muppets can feel safe and all oh, we have to let the pedos in. So the weird people can feel, you know, feel safe. So we're really sacrificing everything. They want us in our pods, eating the food Amazon brings us <laughs> wearing our masks, not interacting Worshipping Anthony Fauci and homosexuals while Antifa and BLM and whoever just destroys our our neighborhoods and we just watch it. The cops don't do anything. And we just say, OK, OK, as Hell, long as my pod in the metaverse is fine. Yeah. Let me know when we're allowed to go back to, to normal. If only people would all get vaccinated, things go back to normal. Yeah. Things aren't going back to normal, folks. So all you can really do is control what you can in your life. That's why we always say become unpinnable mm -hmm. and vibrate at a higher frequency and continue to do that. And that will spread at a grassroots level. And long term, we can win that way. But it all depends on us making changes in our own lives for the better. That's the only hope. Well said. We've been knocked off the timeline and we need to bring ourselves back on. Thank you guys for watching another Fluckus Talks, the podcast in the books, episode 009. We hope you enjoyed it. Shop Fluckus.com for the best merch in the game. Please leave us five star reviews. We are churning the five star reviews. We guys. need more. We need more. We need more. We got it at 400 and something, almost 500. Mm -hmm. We need, we need thousands. Borrow your friend's phone. Borrow your friend's phone, your mom's phone, your computer, your laptop, the iPad, whatever you can. Leave us five star reviews views and some sincere comments we'll read the best ones on the show we appreciate it thank you guys for watching we'll see you at the next one